welcome again. Uh, so, today we are going to start a new chapter uh, of uh, electrical measurement. So, we are going to start discussing about power and energy measurement. Okay. So, this is very important, uh, you know why so. Uh, so, we will start uh, this chapter by with a small recapitulation of electrodynamic instruments. So, recall that an electrodynamic instrument has two sets of coils, a fixed set of coils fixed set of coils and a moving coil which can turn or rotate between the two coils, uh, two fixed coils. So, this is and and we can pass a current say call I uh, this I f for fixed coil and a current call say I m m for moving moving coil. And then the torque equation, if you uh, remember, T d deflecting torque uh, is given by it is proportional to both this currents I f and I m. And then we had a factor, a proportionality constant, which is dependent on the rate of change of mutual inductance with the angle of deflection. Okay. So, uh, we can write this as proportional to these two currents. Now, therefore, and then, then, then we had T c the controlling torque which is equal to k theta and at equal. So, you can uh, equate these two which will give you that theta so, at equilibrium okay, at equilibrium you can write uh, that T c equal to T d okay, uh, if these are constants if they are not changing or if they are time varying quantities okay then you can possibly write it as that the average value of tc should be equal to the average value of uh, td okay so if it is time varying and if if it is varying with a very high frequency okay when can it vary it can vary if I m and I f they are varying then T d can vary. Okay. So, we know that if the frequency is small then is low then the pointer can oscillate, but if the frequency is high then this pointer settles at some average position. So, we may write it as average of T c time average of T c is same as time average of T d and then if the pointer is not moving then the average of this is same as k theta uh, but and so this side we can write time average of this is proportional to im and if okay and this this is a constant so some constant so, you, you may write just write it as a proportionality. Also, you can write it like this way, and therefore, theta will be proportional to. So, this is also a constant, you can write this as time average of this I m I f. Okay. Let me put a t because both of them are functions of time. Okay. So, therefore, the deflection theta will be proportional to the time average of this product 
I am an I F. Okay. So, this instrument by its nature, okay. so this instrument naturally uh, computes product and take average, computes the average of a product, average of a product of two quantities. Okay. So, this is the property or beauty of this electrodynamic instrument. The pointer naturally indicates, naturally it in inherently it indicates the uh, average time average of some uh, 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 of two of the product of two quantities. Okay. And now we know that power is nothing but voltage times current. So, this is instantaneous power and average power. So, time average, average power. So, this is nothing but time average of these two quantities V T and I T. Okay. So, we need to compute this product and then take an average that will give us the average power. Okay. So, uh, suppose I have a power source a battery and then I have a uh, resistance. Okay. So, it can have also some other resistances here. So, this is a circuit and I am interested in finding out the power consumed in this resistance in this load. Okay. So, how much is the power consumed here by this resistance or what is the rate of heat generation here. Okay. So, for that what we have to do? We have to find the current. Okay. So, you have to find the current through this I and we have to measure the voltage V across this resistance okay. and if it is time varying we can write it like this. Then we can we have to take the product of V T and I t and then we have to average it, then we have to average time average. Time average means integrate it over a complete period and divide by the uh, time period. So, this is like integration over a complete period t 1 by t okay, uh, v t i t d t this is what is average. Okay. Now, how do we find it? So, in general therefore, we need an instrument which can take two values as input, find their product and compute its average and give the result. And that instrument is called an watt meter. Okay. So, what is an watt meter? So, watt meter okay. So, at watt meter as a box it will have four terminals okay. two of them to take a voltage as input two of them to take a current some current I as a input and this watt meter its task as a black box of this watt meter is to multiply these quantities 
and then average and the pointer should indicate this value. This is the task of an watt meter. It should have two inputs, one voltage, one current okay? and its task is to take the product of these two average over time and so that uh, through the pointer. Okay? Now, how can we achieve this? This is achievable if we use an electrodynamic instrument because we have seen an electrodynamic instrument inherently naturally do, do, does this. It, it, it inherently computes an average of, uh, of a product. Okay? So, what we can do? So, we will do this. So, we will take an electrodynamic instrument this is the moving coil okay and we will pass the current i this current i through this moving coil and we'll have this sorry fixed coil this is fixed coil and then we'll have this moving coil okay and we can connect say a resistance in series with it some resistance r okay and then we will apply this voltage v across these two terminals so, we will apply V here okay? and we will apply and we will let this current I to flow like this. So, if I name this, this terminal uh, call it V 1, V 2, C 1, C 2, okay? then we have V 1, V 2, C 1, C 2 these are the four terminals and this is my watt meter this is my watt meter okay so this is this watt meter here i have drawn it as a black box but this is actually an electrodynamic instrument okay now, how much will be the current flowing through this moving coil I m? Okay. So, I m we can write this as this voltage V divided by this resistance okay, R which is in this path. So, and including this coil resistance. Okay. So, let me call this R m where R m is the total resistance of the moving coil circuit, moving coil circuit. Okay, that means, this plus the coil resistance everything, this is I m, I m t and what is I f t? this is nothing but this i t. Okay. How much will be the uh, angle of uh, deflection of this coil theta? So, theta by principle of electrodynamic instrument is this time average of i m t and i f t. Okay. So, this is proportional to that. So, theta is proportional to time average of I m t I f t. Now, I m t is V by R m. So, this we can write 
time average of V m or V t by R m times I t this is a constant. So, this constant we can ignore and write it at as. So, this is proportional to time average of V t i t. So, therefore, this is nothing but the power average power. Average power uh, that means, the average of this i t and V t. Okay. Now, if we go back to this circuit, where we wanted to measure the power consumed in this uh, load. Okay. So, we wanted to measure the power consumed in this resistance. How can we do that? So, we will take our watt meter. Okay. So, we will take a watt meter which is nothing but an electrodynamic instrument and it has two sets of coils. Okay. So, one is this fixed coil another is this uh, moving coil. Instead, we can call them also a current coil and the voltage coil. The coil which whichever carries the current we will call as the current coil and the coil that carried uh, that is connected to the voltage we will call that the voltage coil. Okay. So, here uh, so this is this is equivalent to this and then this diagram instead of drawing it like this we can also draw it simply like this. So, we will draw a box okay, and it will have uh, four terminals we can draw the four terminals also like this uh, v 1 v 2 and c 1 c 2 here. Okay. So, this is equivalent to this and we actually have these coils inside. Now, we will depict these coils simply uh, like this with a coil between these two terminals the, which is this coil and another coil between these two terminals which is this coil. Okay. This we will call the current coil okay. and this we will call the voltage coil or you can call it pressure coil. We generally call it pressure coil. Okay. You can call, uh, also name it as P 1 P 2 or you can call it potential coil as well whatever you like. Okay. So, this is an watt meter which has two coils and the task of the watt meter is simply to take a product of this two quantities voltage and this current and compute the average that is what a watt meter is. Now, in this circuit we want to measure this uh, power. So, what we need? we need the watt meter so let's bring our watt meter let's put it here okay it will have two sets of coils one of them you can call the current coil in short cc another you can call as the pressure coil in short P C. Okay. Now, this current coil should measure the current flowing through this resistance. How is that possible? For that we have to make a small disconnection here and connect this current coil like this in series. So, the same current flows through this current coil and through this uh, resistance. So, the current coil is measuring the current and then the pressure coil should measure the voltage between these two terminals. 
right. So, we have to connect this like this one terminal here and the other terminal here. So, this pressure coil is getting a sense of this voltage across this resistance. So, the pressure coil is sensing the voltage, current coil is sensing the current, the watt meter which is this electrodynamic instrument is taking a product of this two and an average and the pointer is showing the average of the product of this two. This is how to connect a watt meter. Okay. So, this is how to connect an watt meter, how to connect an watt meter. This is the way you can understand this. Now, okay, in the uh, rest of the video, we will talk about some problem in this connection and a solution. Okay. So, there is a there is a problem in the connection. What is that problem? Observe that the current which is flowing through this current coil, okay, so call it I C C I C C part of it goes through the resistance okay call this current i r and part of it is going through this pressure coil call this current as i p c i pressure coil so the problem is i c c is equal to i r plus i p c okay now, if I p c is very small, that is possible only if that means, if uh, the resistance of this pressure coil circuit, okay, call that R p c resistance of this circuit is very high then i c c is almost equal to i r okay and the voltage across the pressure coil this is definitely same as the voltage across uh, the uh, resistance. So, voltage across pressure called is definitely equal to voltage across the resistance. Okay. So, therefore, the watt meter reading which is proportional to the current through the current coil Okay, and multiplied by the voltage across the pressure coil V p c and an average. Okay, if these are time varying quantity then you can take an average. Okay. So, this is the watt meter reading. This will be same as I r V r if if this is true that means if i p c is small if i p c is small only if only then this is true okay otherwise there is a small error since I current coil I C C is equal to I R plus 
this extra current IPC. This is the problem. So, this will be the error. Okay. So, the error will be so the error or then the watt meter reading okay, then the read watt meter reading will be so it will be proportional to and the proportionality constant is known to us. So, let me just write it as equal. Uh, so, this then it will be ICC VPC which is now I R plus I P C times V P C. So, this will be now V P C is same as V R. So, this will be I R V R plus I P C V P C. So, this is load power plus pressure coil power and this is the error this is the error. Okay. So, there is a problem and if you recall that we actually had a similar problem very similar problem when we were discussing about the measurement of a resistance using voltmeter uh, ammeter method. Again then we are measuring the current through the voltmeter uh, through the uh, resistance with an ammeter and the voltage across it with the put, uh, voltmeter and the problem was similar because the ammeter was measuring more current than the current in the resistance. So, here also we have the same problem we have an error and once again if you try to connect this in a different way uh, like So, suppose we connect it in a different way uh, so that this current coil is connected after this voltage coil. Okay. So, we may connect this voltage coil uh, this 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 here. Okay. So, then the current coil is measuring the right current definitely I C C now is same as I R. So, I C C is now same as I R, but the voltage coil is measuring V P C which is same as total voltage drop from here to here okay, which is V C C plus V R and therefore, the watt meter reading this will be same as I C C V P C which is same as I C I R and V P C we can write V C C plus V R okay. and then this will be I R V R plus I R V C C. Now, I R V C C is same as I R is same as I C C. So, we can write this as I C C V C C. So, then this is equal to load power plus this is current coil power C C power current coil power. So, then this is the error. Once again, if say uh, the resistance of the current coil is very small, so this is like like I mean like an ammeter. Okay, so, so this is like an ammeter. This is like a voltmeter, and ideally an ammeter should have very low resistance. So if it is very low, so then if I uh, RCC is very low, then 
v p c this will be almost equal to v r because this will be of much smaller value because this resistance is small. So, voltage drop is small and then watt meter reading will be same as the load power. Okay. So, this, this coil as I was saying it behaves like an ammeter coil, this coil behaves like a uh, voltmeter coil. So, it, it should have a infinite resistance, it should have 0 resistance. So, it, if it is so, if it really has 0 resistance or very small resistance then no problem, if it has high, very high resistance then also not, no problem, but nothing is infinite, nothing is 0 practically. So, we may have some small error and then it depends once again on the relative value of this resistance, this resistance and this resistance. If it happens that uh, this resistance is much call it R, okay. if this R is much much higher than R C C, then this connection is fine. Okay. Then most of the voltage drops here, very little voltage drop uh, occurs here. Okay. Similarly, in the previous circuit, uh, Sorry for this. Okay. So, in this circuit, if this resistance is much much higher than this resistance R, if R P C is much much higher than R, then this circuit is fine. So, it all depends on the relative value of the three resistances R, R P C and R C C. Okay. Depending on therefore, the value of this resistance, this and this resistance, you may choose which circuit to use this circuit or that circuit. If you have a resistance which is very small, if this resistance is very small, then you should use this circuit and if this resistance is very high, then you should use this circuit. Okay. But both the above circuits have some small error. Now, we are going to show you a uh, new uh, solution, a solution to this problem where this error will be uh, avoided okay? and that is called a compensated watt meter. So, this is the next topic, okay? so compensated watt meter. So, it has definitely two coils. Okay. So, let me draw uh, the two coils first. Uh, I will draw the two uh, coils on a fictitious cylinder okay. and you know that there is actually no core used in 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 an electrodynamic instrument and, and watt meter is nothing but an electrodynamic instrument so it has actually no core 
So, this is a fictitious score. So, this is a fictitious imaginary. Okay. So, imaginary you can call it imaginary code. I am using it for uh, imaginary code for ease of drawing. So, and then we have a call which goes like this. Okay. So, this is the current coil. Okay. So, this red one is the current coil. These are the two terminals and let me have, let me draw the pressure coil, voltage coil. So, I can draw the voltage coil just simply like this. and let there be a large series resistance added to it. Okay, so, this is a voltage coil. So, this series resistance is added because voltage coil should have ideally infinite resistance otherwise uh, and also uh, the, this will be connected directly to the for voltage measurement. If we do not have enough resistance then a large current can flow. Okay. Now, say I have the load resistance here. So, this is the load resistance R which is being fed by a battery. And we want to measure the load power or the power here. Okay. Now, for that this call should measure the voltage. Okay. So, what we will do? We will connect the first the voltage call Okay. And this current coil we will connect in series. Like this. Okay. So, now we will have uh, this current coil is actually measuring more current okay, because it is measuring this current I R plus this current. Okay. So, this is a problem to get rid of this problem we will do this. We will take another wire which we will start from here okay, and we will wrap it on this uh, fictitious imaginary cylinder in the opposite direction, completely opposite direction. Okay. So, if, if uh, say so that if the current was flowing like this, this wire should have current in the opposite direction. And we will have exactly same number of turns as this current coil has. And we will connect this here. So, now this coil we call the compensating coil, the blue one is the compensating coil. Okay. 
Now, let us uh, see uh, what happens. We know that the So, we know that the current that is flowing through this rate coil, okay. so I C C, I C C current coil current is equal to how much? This will be, so this current is going like this and from here a part of the current goes through this resistance which is uh, I R, let me write it in black and part of this current goes through this blue wire and then through this voltage coil. So, let me write that in green. So, this current is same as I P C. Okay. This current through this compensating coil, okay, you can write it as I comp, compens is same as I P C. Okay. So, I C C is therefore, sum of I P C plus I R. Okay. Now, the magnetic field generated together by this current coil and compensating coil that is how much? So, let us write the magnetic field generated magnetic field or magnetic effect uh, generated uh, by the current coil and compensating coil together, comp coil together. This will be proportional to how much this forward current which is I C C minus this backward current because this backward current is creating flux or magnetic field in the opposite direction. Okay. Call that I uh, that is how much I P C. Okay. Now, we have seen that I C C is I P C plus I R. So, therefore, this is equal to I P C plus I R minus I P C and this I P C this I P C cancels. So, this is equal to I R load current only. Okay. And how much is this current or how much is the magnetic effect uh, generated by the voltage coil? Okay. So, voltage coil current is same as the total voltage from here to here, okay, starting from here to here. So, this voltage call it V R okay, starting from here up to this. Okay. So, that is V R divided by the total resistance in this path, this blue wire, then this green wire, then this resistance. So, this total resistance. So, total resistance of uh, compensating coil plus uh, this voltage coil. V divided by this. Now, this is a constant, okay, this resistance is a constant. So, therefore, this is proportional to V R and then how much will be the torque? Torque will be proportional to the magnetic field generated by this and the magnetic field generated by this. 
okay, or this magnetic field generated by these two together blue and red uh, current coil and compensating coil and the current here through the pressure coil or voltage coil. So, this will be proportional to therefore, this which is I r and this V r this is nothing but load power. Okay. So, the beauty of this circuit is that the extra current that this current coil is carrying extra current which is nothing but uh, this this I p c voltage coil current is is going in a backward direction cancelling its own effect cancelling its own magnetic effect and then it is going through like this. Okay. So, therefore, whatever the current through this voltage coil that that is definitely coming through the current coil, but it has ultimately no effect because its, it's effect is cancelled by this compensating coil. Okay. So, therefore, the torque is proportional to the load power and therefore, definitely watt meter reading will be proportional to the load power the power in the voltage coil will not come in picture. So, this is compensated watt meter. Thank you.